Hi friends. I did a video back in December entitled Apollyon and I had mentioned the topic of locusts and had stated at the time that it was such an involved topic that I could not discuss it. Well, I was glancing through the April 2020 Watchtower and absolutely could not believe my eyes. They had an article on the locusts, so I knew it was time to get into this topic. You know, the locusts in the book of Joel is pretty easy to cover, except of course when Watchtower gets involved. So let's get to it. In the preview of this article, it says this. For many years, we have believed that the prophecy recorded in Joel chapters 1 and 2 foretells our modern-day preaching activity. However, there are four good reasons why it appears that an adjustment should be made in our understanding of this portion of Joel's prophecy. What are the reasons? Well, notice here the song number 95. The title of that is The Light Gets Brighter. Well, I'm gonna show you that this is not new light and not any light that gets brighter. It's a light that contradicts old teaching that in the first place was wrong, which doesn't necessarily mean that the new teaching is right either. So the brighter light vastly contradicts past teaching. And I'm gonna take you to scripture to show you what the truth really is. So in this preview of this article, Watchtower is basically saying that what they had previously taught about Joel chapters 1 and 2 foretold the preaching work. So they were comparing the locusts, as mentioned in these two chapters, to the modern day preaching work of Jehovah's Witnesses and how they go out and basically render the false prophets of Christendom as useless. But now they have to make an adjustment. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has this not been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and tell your and let your children tell their children and their children another generation that what the palmer worm has left has the locust eaten and that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten awake you drunkard, drunkards and weep and howl all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off for your mouth for a nation has come up unto my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. So would you agree with me that these locusts, that this godly prophet Joel mentions, are used by God to destroy devour and decimate. Could we all agree on that? And Watchtower has said in the past that these locusts are the publishers. So let's just go to a few Watchtowers of the past just to make sure. We have a 1998 Watchtower confirming here that this great throng of Jehovah's worshipers bring about complete desolation of the land. And in a 2008 watchtower, it compares Gilead missionaries to the locusts. You see, what Watchtower is doing is they're actually admitting that their teaching decimates or desolates the land. One thing you need to understand is that the Jehovah of Watchtower is different than the true God in the Bible. Once you see this, you'll be able to understand this more clearly. If you will, and if you haven't seen my video on the name Jehovah, please check it out because it will give you a clue. 
You see, the devil is a deceiver. He knows that he's going to eventually be thrown into the lake of fire. And he wants to take as many followers with him as he possibly can. He cannot create. He can only deceive. He can only copy. He wants people to worship him. So therefore, he misleads people into worshiping him because he's an imposter. As an imposter, he has misled people into thinking that he's this ugly, nasty beast with a pitchfork. Yet when he was created, he was created as the, a beautiful cherub that covers. His body was made of press, precious gems and jewels and his he was also made, he was kind of like a pipe organ is what the book of Ezekiel says. He had pipes and timbrels and all that. He was beautiful, but because of his pride, he turned from the true God and he became the deceiver, the devil, Satan. So the witnesses don't realize that the God, Jehovah of the publications is not the true God. But when you compare what the publications say to what scripture says, you can see it very clearly. You can see the difference. You know, scripture says that you can tell a false prophet by his fruits. And this is Watchtower's fruit. Let me explain further. I want to show you what the def definition of the word occult is. O-C-C-U-L-T, occult. Its basic definition is cut off from view by interposing something. Do you see that there, the verb? When you look up the word interpose, you'll see that it says place or insert between one thing or another. You see, I know that the Watchtower organization is an occultic organization because they cut off from view the only true God and they interpose their God, Jehovah, in his place. And then what did they tell us that we had to do? Meditate on the publications. You can't understand the Bible yourself. Well, that's true because they want you to worship their God. And if you're reading the Bible without the publications, you won't know their God. You'll only get to know the true God. The true God of the Bible is love. God is love. The God of the Watchtower, Jehovah, is what? Fear, guilt, confusion. They kept us so busy. They turned us into slaves that we didn't have a glimpse of the true God. They kept us so confused that we ended up giving them blind obedience because we were wrestling with principalities of the air, right? It wasn't our fault. We simply were trying to serve God, but we were deceived. We were misled because their publications only contain a false doctrine. And that's what we believed. And we were confused. Here's the great news. The true God is greater. The true God created the devil. He didn't create him as the devil but he created him as the cherub. He's greater. Jesus will come back and will destroy his enemies with the breath of his mouth. Satan's been defeated. Jesus conquered death. He raised bodily from the dead. He is the victor. And therefore, when we repent of doing things our way and turn to Christ, then we are on the winning team and the devil has no power over us. We can, of course, stay stuck being confused and angry at Watchtower, or we can just turn around and say, no, I'm going to walk boldly forward as a follower of Christ. I'm going to follow the true God. I'm going to be on the winning team. Let me show you what 
2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But back to Watchtower. You see, honestly, their poisonous teaching comes from their Bible, the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. If you've not seen my video on Johannes Grieber, please watch it because you will learn that Watchtower used Johannes Grieber's, Grieber's translation of the Bible, and guess what? He got his teaching from evil spirits, from demons. So therefore, his Bible was demonically inspired. The New World Translation in copying Johannes Grieber's Bible of John 1.1 1, 1, saying that Jesus was a God. The New World Translation is a demonically inspired Bible as well. Watchtower knows this and it was right in front of our faces, but we were so indoctrinated that we never saw it. But let's get back to the April 2020 Watchtower because Watchtower gives us four reasons why they changed their mind about their interpretation of Joel chapter 1 and 2. So obviously they're now saying that these decimating locusts were not the publishers. So the first reason is here. It says, first of all, Jehovah's promise with regard to the plague of locusts I will drive the northerner, the locust, far away from you. If the locusts represent Jehovah's Witnesses as they obey Jesus' command to preach and make disciples, why would Jehovah promise to drive them away? Clearly Jehovah is driving away not his faithful servants, but something or someone who is hostile to his people. Now, don't be deceived because the Jesus of Watchtower is an imposter as well. Remember, they say that he is merely a God, and they also say that he is Michael the Archangel. So the first reason why Watchtower needs to change their mind about the interpretation of Joel 1 is that Jehovah is not driving away his servants. Really, Watchtower, you couldn't see this earlier? But let's move on to the second reason. The second reason, consider what is written at Joel 2.25. There Jehovah says, I will make compensation to you for the years that the swarming locust, the unwinged locust, the voracious locust, and the devouring locust have eaten my great army, have eaten my great army that I sent among you. Notice that Jehovah promises to make compensation for the damage the locusts have caused. If the locusts picture kingdom evangelizers, this would suggest that the message they proclaim causes damage. No kidding. Yet that life-saving message can actually move some of the wicked to repent. You better believe Watchtower's message causes damage. It caused us a lot of damage. It caused people to lose their families. It caused people to lose their lives when they wouldn't take blood transfusions. It caused suicides over the devastating effects of being shunned. It most definitely caused damage and that's why Watchtower originally was saying it was the publishers because they knew they were they were, you have to read in between the lines to see what they were actually doing and what they're actually saying. But now for some reason they're changing their minds. But let's move on to the third reason. So the third reason, it's telling you to read Joel 2.28, which I'm not going to do right now. Consider a third reason, the sequence of events outlined by the prophecy. Did you notice that Jehovah says, after that I will pour out my spirit? That is after the locusts have completed their assigned task. If the locusts are preachers of, king, of God's kingdom, why would Jehovah pour out a spirit on them after they finished their witnessing? The reality is that without the help of God's powerful Holy Spirit, they would never have kept preaching for decades despite opposition and even bans on their work. So Watchtower, you couldn't see this before that God pours out his blessing after the preaching but or after the devouring, but let's move on to the fourth reason. So paragraph 17, what has changed? We now have a more accurate understanding of the prophecy found in Joel 2. 
Simply put, these verses refer not to our zealous preaching work, but to the activity of the Babylonian army that invaded Jerusalem in 607 BCE. Well, first of all, Babylon invaded Jerusalem in 586, and I also did a video on that. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was invaded in 586, but Watchtower can't get rid of that 607 because then it runs into 1914 and it just becomes a big mess. So what has not changed in verse 18, Jehovah's people continue to preach the good news everywhere using every possible avenue to do so. No governmental restriction can prevent us from carrying out the commission to preach. And with Jehovah's blessing, we are more active than ever, really. That's why you're selling kingdom halls, but courageously preaching the good news of the kingdom. We humbly continue to look to Jehovah for his guidance and understanding Bible prophecy, confident that when the time is right, he'll lead us into all the truth. Maybe one day, pff, he hasn't led you into all truth yet. I, I'm This just blows my mind that they're changing this teaching again when just in December, I found it was going to be so difficult to try to even get into the fact that they were saying the locusts were the publishers and now they're changing it. All right, so what is the book of Joel all about? Well, I want you to read the book of Joel, preferably find a King James BibleGateway.com is a great source. You will be able to understand it even though it has the old language, but the old language is important but read it and I'm going to give you some guidance, okay? Joel's message was aimed at the southern kingdom of Judah. In chapter 1, he spoke of their, uh, because of their disobedience to the true God, they were sacrificing their babies to the fires of Molech. They were doing all kinds of crazy pagan worship, which I'm not even going to get into, crazy stuff, but because of this, that the land had been devoured, which was a sign of judgment by God. It had been devoured by the locusts and, and all of that. God was trying to bring them back to him, saving the babies, saving the human sacrifices, and bringing them back to the true worship. All right, then when you get to Joel chapter 2, you're going to see that Joel builds upon the past events and he looks ahead to the future. You'll see that this poetic language now starts talking about men and horses and battle and what men will do in the future. It changes from insects to men. In verses in chapter 2, verses 12 through 17, God tells them, but if you repent, I'll change my mind. Stop doing these wicked things that you're doing, and I'll change my mind. Look at verse 19. It says, yes, the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. There was blessings. There could have been blessings to them. And Joel 3 then focuses on end time, the end time battle, that great and mighty battle of Armageddon. The battle between good and evil when evil is just totally destroyed. So please read the book of Joel for yourself. Don't take my word for it at all. So in closing, I just want to talk about new light, okay? Because remember that song in the, in the beginning, this brighter light or something crazy like that. I want to read to you John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, When he, the Spirit of truth, or the Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So who will guide you in all truth? The Holy Spirit will guide you in all truth. The true believers of Jesus Christ who have accepted him as their personal savior, they've repented of their old ways of doing things and have turned to him. The Holy Spirit will guide them, okay? Now, I wanna show you what Watchtower says about who will guide them. This is in the 2006 Watchtower. 
February 15th, Jehovah is the source of spiritual light. While the world remains in dense darkness, the true God continues to shed light on his people. Increasing light from Jehovah continues to illuminate the path of his people. It refines them organizationally, doctrinally, and morally. Really? So did Jehovah guide the organization in telling them for all those years, maybe 50 years, that the publishers were the locusts? Is that the, the truth? Jehovah leads you? Listen, we're not in spiritual darkness or dense darkness. We have the word of God. Look, right here. Not this. This is the demonically inspired Bible. We have this right here. King James. This is it. There's no dense darkness whenever we have this. This is all we need, friends. This is all we need. I want to read you one more scripture. 1 John 4, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, I've tried you, Watchtower, and you've failed. You've failed miserably. And the reason I know is because your publications do not line up to the word of God. This is it. This is all we need, friends. This is all we need. So listen, I want to ask you, here's the question. Why did Watchtower print this article in the April 2020 Watchtower? Why do you feel that they've admitted that they were wrong? Why have they said they've changed their minds? Why are they saying that the light is getting brighter and Jehovah is providing new light? I'd love to know your thoughts. What is this all about? Friends, thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel. I pray for you. I was up praying for you and your families this morning. Today is my brother's birthday. You know, he was my favorite person in the whole entire world. The last time I saw my brother or heard his voice, I was gonna say it was 1989, but my grandmother passed away and I saw him very briefly at her funeral, but, and that was in the 90s, maybe 1998 or so, something like that. Today's my brother's birthday and um, I love my brother. I prayed for him and I pray for you guys. And um, listen, God is greater, friends. We're not defeated. There is no defeat in this. If you've come out of that organization or if you're Pimo, get out of her. You never know, maybe your family will, will follow you. Wouldn't that be wonderful? This organization is crumbling. We have victory in Jesus Christ. We've won. We are on the winning team. Turn to Jesus Christ. Read this book for truth. Forget Watchtower. The defeat and the decimation of Watchtower is in the past. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. We're going to keep looking up and no more Watchtower lies. Have a wonderful day.